Welcome back to the channel, guys. This week we are camping at Withlacoochee River Park in Dade City, Florida. This is uh, this is a favorite little getaway for us. It's close to home, like a few of our other favorite getaways. But the first time we've camped here in August, and it's hot. Yeah, normally we stay here in October. We love being here with the the whole church vibe and, and Halloween time. It's really cool. But while we were here, we actually had a lot of people hanging out with us <laughs> it was awesome so we at one point had eight people <laughs> that we were entertaining in this rv and two dogs two larger dogs and it just makes a perfect kind of little circle around in the living room having the driver's seat and the passenger seat being able to swivel around making two extra seats everybody can see everybody and engage in the conversation it was great there's jimmy and the new RV. Good morning. <laughs> so last time we camped with Jimmy, we were off-roading up in Holder Mine, and he had his what? We, what did you name the RV? Uh, Tipsy Cruiser. Tipsy Cruiser. Now he's got what's this one now? Doesn't have a name yet. So this is the first. We actually found a way that we can bring our bikes with us. We're going to take a look at a solar panel from All Powers. Now, if you remember correctly, All Powers had sent us this little power bank uh, probably three or four months ago. We've been using it quite a bit. Um, it has the wireless charging for the phone on top, which is nice. A couple USB outlets and a 110 outlet. If you want to look at that video, I'll leave a link up above. You can check that out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the box here and see what all we have inside. All right, so after opening the box, we got some instructions. We got some adapters, some cabling, and I'm just going to give the instructions a quick glance over. This will charge this, supposedly like with full sun, like less than an hour. So my plan is to use this to power this with the power of the sun. And we got plenty of sun, so I'm going to set the solar panel probably up over on the picnic table. And rather than having it plugged in, you know, to our power here, which is fine, I'm gonna plug it into this little guy and just let it uh, keep everything charged. We are pulling in 95 watts of power right now, solar power. Charging our little power station up. We got some good full sun right now. So it should be charged up in no time at all. And then I will run our refrigerator off of the little power bank and see how long it will run our refrigerator before it drains down. I had this plugged into the solar panel over here and we are now 99% full. So I'm going to plug it into the fridge and see what it says as far as how long we can run the fridge off of this little power bank. It says 24 hours worth of AC power right now. Fridge is on. It's at 27 degrees. I'm gonna leave that there. It's jumped down. It says 24 hours, so we'll see. We'll uh, we'll leave it connected until we're ready to leave. So far, we're really liking this setup of having uh, this portable fridge and having the All Powers power bank and being able to run the fridge off this power bank. That allows me to keep the uh, TV compartment closed, and I can just uh, keep this here. If it looks like it's gonna rain, what I did. Uh, Last night is I just opened up the uh, storage compartment here and I sat the power bank inside here, even though we're under the awning and kind of protected from the slide out a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's working great. The solar panel was pulling in like 95 watts when I first plugged it in this morning. So it's definitely got some power for a little foldable solar panel. We will leave a link, guys, down below in the description if you want to pick up or even just check out anything that All Powers has to offer. They've been a great company to work with. We highly recommend the products we've been using. 
And we will have a special discount code to where you can, uh, when you're shopping at All Powers, you can put in the discount code down below and receive a special little discount. Everything folds up and is tucked away nicely. Easy to transport and store. I will be putting it back in the storage bay when I load up our grill and everything. I put it in last. Okay, so a couple months ago, I reached out to Renee from Happily Ever Hanks and asked her where she got her canvas pictures for the RV. When they were giving us a tour of their RV, I noticed all the canvas pictures and I just love them. So I wanted to add some canvas pictures for our new RV and add a little bit of adventure. So I chose a couple different canvas pictures and obviously loved the Grand Canyon and wanted to remember this adventure. Also wanted to have something at the beach. So we wanted to have a Cedar Key picture. So we have the mountains, we have the beach. Love this one. Then in the bedroom, I wanted to add some of our 10 year anniversary pics that we had made for us. It's this one, which is my favorite of all of the pictures that Valerie was our photographer, a friend of mine. And then Chuck chose this one. This was his favorite. So if you're interested and you live in the area and you're looking to have some professional photos done, uh, Valerie is her name and Celebrate Everything Photography by Valerie is her company. And uh, we can put a link down in the description below for that. She is absolutely amazing. The most wonderful woman has the biggest heart. And I think you would definitely be excited to have her take her pictures for your family. We're still in the process of hanging things and, and decorating this RV and making it our own. We had this, this is us, our life, our story, our home in Aquila. We just haven't gotten around to hanging it yet. We thought like, it looks like it would fit like a glove right here above the door. Now we had talked about putting a, maybe something up here to hang our keys from, but maybe we could still do it here on the side, you know, hang, hang our keys as we come in. I think this is gonna look pretty good there. So we actually, uh, Allie actually found this hook. I think we bought these for hanging Christmas lights, didn't we? Yep. And so we had one left over. Perfect. There we go. Well, you got a key holder. Yay, simple. Yeah. So yesterday we went down to Date City as we typically do when we're here. Mm -hmm. We ate at the green door again and I got the jambalaya. Perfect for a 107 heat index day sitting <laughs> outside. It was perfect and a uh, side salad, side Caesar salad. And it was, it was awesome as always. And I had a strawberry salad and it was really good, really refreshing. As usual, when we're in Date City, we go to- Dog mania and cats. Yeah. We went in uh, specifically this time looking for something for Nikki. We wanted to get her a harness with a handle on the back. She's having a little bit of issue mm -hmm. with the steps in this RV. There's more steps, it's steeper. Um, she would always want to kind of skip the last step in our other RV, but didn't seem to be much of an issue. But this one here, she sometimes wants to skip the two steps that come out that are on the outside. And right before we went downtown, she, uh, I wasn't watching and she was still kind of sleepy from sleeping. And, um, and she took a little tumble. Yeah. And she was carrying her back right leg a little bit and I was freaking out that she hurt herself. Yeah. But so she we... walked it off, you know? So we were able to get the harness and the nice thing about it, um, Jimmy, our friend has a really cool leash where you can clip it to around your waist so you don't have to hold it and you can have your hands free to film or whatever. And not only clipping it around your waist, you can use it to clip it around like uh, our chair when we're out eating, you know, mm -hmm. instead of having to take the leash off of her and tie it like we normally do through the belt or through the loop, handle loop, you can just, yeah, it's really nice. The harness that we ended up here with uh, was not the original one we picked up. It was a blue. Allie really liked the color of the blue, but they didn't have a leash that matched the blue. So it went she, with a totally different theme. The one that we ended up going with was like ten dollars more yeah. than the blue one for some reason. But the lady uh, told us if we wanted it, she would make us a deal on it. So she ended up knocking off twenty percent off of it and the leash. They're so friendly there. They really are. So if you're in Dade City and you're a pet lover, mm -hmm. you got to go in there. I always give treats to the dogs when we go in there, and uh, and tell them Allie Chuck sent you. Yeah. So I had. Uh, interesting time last night. I decided to try to get up in the bunk over the cab without using the ladder and stepping on that little ottoman that Allie bought. That was a mistake. I fell and I fell hard and I hurt my ankle pretty good. I 
not even sure how I hurt my ankle. I think it, when I fell, I think my ankle kind of whacked into the stairwell. But it is swollen pretty good, even after icing it down last night. And it hurt like a son of a gun last night, but uh, not too bad today. All right, so we, uh, we enjoyed having our bikes. It worked out great the way we, uh, you know, strapped them down inside the Bronco. They are not uh, flopping against the side or anything here or hurting anything with the strap on there. They're nice and tight. Glad we found a way that we can enjoy the uh, electric bikes again. And really didn't have to spend any money to try to figure out a way to, to get them to the campsites using what we already got with the Bronco. A little update on the, uh, the Roadmaster Nighthawk too. It has uh, been working great. Everything has been working as it should. Uh, I did order a two inch drop that I'm going to, I actually was going to put it in this weekend, but I forgot the key to the lock. Guess I'll have to wait till I get home and get the lock or get the key for the lock, but I do have a two inch drop that should level this out. I mean, it's pretty level now, but I think two inches will just totally level that out perfectly. Okay. So the next job is to change the oil on our generator. It has just over 50 hours and I'm supposed to change it for the break-in period. So it should be pretty simple. Just open this petcock valve up right here. It's got a drain tube that comes out the underneath side. Up under here, drain the oil, take the oil filter off, which is right here, which you can access from the bottom side, and refill it with a couple quarts. Go ahead and take the cap loose. It will fill so it can get some air through it. Oil doesn't look too bad. It's kind of odd that it has this here. So I'm going to put this up here to catch the oil. Otherwise, it's going to drain down on that whatever it is that the oil is starting to drain. Hopefully it can just catch it right here. I had to suspend working on this yesterday as I waited for a few parts to come through Amazon. I ordered a oil filter and I actually ordered the Onan, Onamax oil. I did not go with the Onan Cummins oil filter because it was $38. This was 12 from what I read on reviews. Everything says that it's totally, totally fine totally good oil filter. Take the oil fill cap back off. I'm gonna go ahead and get this oil filter off. The easiest way to find out what size I need is to use the new one. Uh, hopefully I have one in here that's the right size. And it looks like it's gonna be the 901. I also got a oil filter wrench set here. I got it loose. I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate the seal. It's always taught to do that. All right, it's good and hand tight. You don't need to tighten any more than that. All right now. So this is no joke. You do have to go very slow with the last half a quart. I would say three quarters of a quart to half a quart. Barely letting it trickle in or it will overflow. Take your time, be patient. It will take the full two quarts with that oil filter. I will leave some links down below for this particular brand of oil and that oil filter. I'm gonna put the cover back on, run it for a minute, and job done. Okay, so I think it's time, finally, to take these two batteries out and put my lithium battery in and see how this is gonna work. And if the lithium battery is gonna actually do a better job of running our refrigerator. Okay, so it's time to modify this battery tray. These lithium batteries are huge. So this back, this back brace is gonna, I don't know if it's connected or not. I don't think it is. I think it's just bent up. So I'm gonna to try to bend it down flat so I can lay it in there flat, put a strap up over and uh, Secure the battery in. What I ended up doing, I took a hacksaw and I just cut down here where the battery will fit. 
hopefully it will fit. If it doesn't, I'll go back with the angle grinder and cut a little bit more off. But uh, this was not even welded in the corners. So I just bent, I cut a little off the back side just to make it bend easier at the seam. Bend it down, I still have a strap lock here. So I should be able to strap up and over the battery to the front here. And I should be able to run, you know, a strap, maybe caddy cornered across the battery here, one or the other. It shouldn't go anywhere. So the battery is fitting in there now. I got plenty of room to spare on each side. Tray is modified and she is in there. You can see where the tray ended here before. So I just bent that flap down. Okay, so I just switched the little lithium lead acid dip switch in there. If you can see it right there. LA down is lith or lead acid, LI is lithium. So I switched it to lithium. I heard the charge controller kick off for a second. Now you can hear it running again, the fan. All right, guys, so this wraps up this video. We will see you next weekend at Tills Hill Campground. We are going to be camping with a bunch of friends next weekend, doing some off-roading. We'll see you next weekend, guys. All right, bye.